Welcome everyone, it's Maximus. Thank you so much for joining me on this video today. I hope you're having a good day. So, today we are talking about the age-old debate that's been going on for many, many years, let alone just in the modern-day conflict era. Is the main battle tank here to stay, or are we slowly starting to see that the main battle tank era is coming to an end? Well, let me put it this way, guys. No. The main battle tank is here to stay. Now, this is subjective, and everybody has their own opinions on this, but it's just fact as of right now. Main battle tanks are still being produced, and if main battle tanks are still being produced, that means they still have a very, very active role on the modern battlefield. We have to remember, guys, that tank-on-tank -tank warfare is extremely rare in most conflicts today. What we're seeing a lot in Syria and such is, for the majority of the time, it is anti-tank weapons versus tank. Now, this is what is bringing into the world um, of military sort of enthusiasts the debate of whether or not the tank is still credible on the battlefield. We're starting to see a lot more modern day weapon systems being able to engage tanks from longer distances, more discreet um, locations, and being able to puncture through the armor of some of the modern ta tanks out there today. And that's scary. It's very scary because we're talking about a tank that uh, is designed to take punches from other tanks and now all of a sudden uh, we're getting some weapon systems out there that are actually able to just annihilate a tank from long distance um, from an infantry fighting vehicle or even just an infantry weapon itself uh, without even the use of a main gun like the 120mm cannon and such and other uh, armaments that are out there for the Russian vehicles uh, against Western vehicles and it's scary, it really is because the tank is now no more a armor thickness credibility. We're talking about weapons that can top down attack, can puncture right through the weak points of the vehicle. Uh, and we're also talking about, you know, there's a lot of threat in the modern day conflicts in terms of IEDs, uh, mines and such. I mean, tanks um, are inherently very weak underneath and they're obviously up armored packages that help prevent that weakness from being exploited. However, you've got to look at, it, at the bigger picture here. IEDs can be left in place Inevitably, they, they are put in the ground, you can put as much explosives down as you want there, and let me, let me just put it this way, from first hand experience, it doesn't matter how much armor is on your vehicle, if they put enough explosives in that IED or that mine blast, your vehicle will not survive. Okay, trust me on this guys, I've seen it happen first time, some of the most heavily armored vehicles being absolutely annihilated by IEDs, and it's very, very scary. And let's be honest here, let's just be brutally honest. How many Abrams from the Western world have you seen gone in tank-on-tank tank warfare? Not RPG, TOW, or any other conquers, missiles, all those sort of things coming from Syria and such. Tank-on-tank tank warfare, are we seeing it? Very, very rarely. Yes, Ukraine has um, obviously a bit of tank-on-tank tank warfare right now. And they're starting to experience, obviously, the different armor packages and how they're actually performing uh, against one another. But in the overall grand scheme of things, anti-tank guided weapon systems, such as anti-tank guided missiles, and IEDs are one of the biggest and most common threats to the main battle tank on the modern battlefield today. You've also got to realize that the main battle tank, even though it has such threats like this, they're constantly upgrading and finding new ways to deter from these kind of ambushes and attacks and you know all these kind of threats that come towards the tank. And if tanks are still being built, then clearly the tank is not going anywhere soon. It is still a prominent feature on the battleground. And honestly, I think that's here for quite some time yet. Now, I completely understand and agree with the skepticism in terms of whether or not it should be 
considered a, a valuable asset for the battlefield because of these systems being put in place. We're starting to see some of these missiles being able to penetrate armor, being able to knock out some of the most formidable tanks. Um, but at the same instance, we're also starting to see some of the systems they're putting in place to defend these vehicles are also doing their job very nicely. Uh, there's some fantastic footage out there all over the place of, uh, you know, the... Uh, Anti-RPG systems put in place to be able to prevent uh, heat rounds hitting the side of the vehicle before it even gets the explosive reactive armor. This kind of technology I can only see expanding tenfold. It really is just going to explode. Uh, we know that the Western world is highly, highly keen on adapting these systems in place also. We've obviously seen that the T-14 Armata has its own specific uh, systems put in place. And we know there are other uh, vehicles in the Western world that are also putting in these kind of practices and designs. Um, and again, as I said, it's going to continue to reinforce the fact that the main battle tank is here to stay on the battleground. Now, again, a lot of people will pull out the, well, tanks are completely redundant because air superiority will knock them out. Look, guys, let me put it this way. If main battle tanks are being placed onto the battlefield and we're worrying about air superiority knocking them out, shit has seriously hit the fan. I'm not kidding, okay? If we're putting jets against tanks in a modern-day conflict against nations... It's World War Three. It will be. The Abrams that we see in, in America, the Challenger 2 and such, if we're getting air assets trying to take out those vehicles, trust me, there's a bigger problem than wondering whether or not tanks should be on the battlefield or not. Because if we're way beyond escalation at that point in terms of tank-on-tank -tank or anti-tank warfare, it's a whole new ball game. So I'm talking about in terms of what's actually happening. Not, you know, the skeptical theorizing what could happen, okay, which I understand where you're coming from and the people who come across with that particular point, but I'm looking at exactly what is happening in today's current climate for military. There isn't jets coming out to knock out American Abrams. There is not that asset in place. There is the asset in place in Syria and such knocking out Abrams, which before you all pounce on me, I fully understand that the Abrams that has been exported to Syria is not the same armored package as the one that the Western world of the United States use. That being said though, we are seeing that tanks that have been put in place to combat these anti-tank weapon systems and these terrorist organizations are beginning to be taken advantage of their weaknesses. And organizations, terrorist organizations, are starting to exploit those weaknesses. It's kind of worrying. It's kind of worrying um, because... If they can exploit the small weaknesses on the low armored vehicles, they'll eventually one day, if it came to it, exploit the weaknesses of the heavily up armored vehicles. It's just a matter of time, and hopefully we never have to go to that place. I don't want war, I don't want conflict. To be honest, Syria is just... Oh, there's no words for it. I mean, it's, it's a horrible situation. It's just not a good time, and I'm not going to go into politics and be all mushy here, but it's just not a good time, and I don't want to see any tank crews taken out. Um, that don't deserve it. So that's just my opinion on that. Um, so really, overall then, there is a huge threat towards the main battle tank. That's just a given. But there's a lot of things in place to try and prevent those things being, you know, something that can outright take the tank off the battlefield. A couple of other things, though, that make me a little concerned about the modern day tank being continuing to stay on is they're getting bigger and they're getting heavier. Um, you know, up armor packages more weight, more armor, more armament, more ammunition, etc, etc. They're talking about upgrading the main uh, gun to most more Western day tanks now, and obviously we're seeing that the Russians are up-armoring up and up uh, upgrading their armament too, which is going to be a given, you know, if we're producing more armor, we're going to need to produce better weapon systems, better firepower to punch through that armor. In turn, we're increasing the vehicle's weight. The bigger and heavier that we're making these vehicles, the potentially slower they're going to be, and the less effective they're going to be to be able to, for instance, cross bridges and such, which on the battlefield is very key. Rivers are a natural, you know, obstacle. And if we're pushing over, you know, the 75 ton to 80 ton range mark, potentially in the near future here, if we keep pumping up the armor on these things, we're going to cause restrictions. These are very minor restrictions, not really something that you can really concern yourself too much with right now, because clearly we're going to put the systems in place to be able to provide us bridges for those vehicles, whether it be bridge layers or whatnot. But it is a logistical nightmare to try and put in place those kind of resources, because they also need to be very, very heavy, they're going to be very slow, and, you know, it goes on and on and on. 
So let's just go over a couple of facts that reinforce the fact that the tank is here to stay. They incite fear. Let's just look at it like this. You're an infantry squad, you're in a set up position, you're hunkered down, you're dug in really nice, and you see a whole platoon of people tanks charging towards you, coax blasting, main guns engaging targets to your rear. It's scary, guys. I mean, I've never been put in that situation facing a main battle tank in front of me, charging at me, and I hope to fucking god I never have to. And I hope none of you have to either, those of you who are serving or have served or want to serve. But that being said, they do. It's a naturally scary thing to see a 75 ton or 60 ton vehicle charging towards you, guns blazing. Unless you have the weapon system in, in, active enough to take that vehicle out, you know it's charging upon you, and you know eventually it could potentially take over your position. And that's a really important thing. You know, the human factors of this kind of weapon system being put in place is going to scare the crap out of infantry sections, fighting patrols, and just the command elements of the forces you are fighting in general. You know, if they know tanks are coming, they know they've got to have the punch be able to return that, you know, that, that spearhead coming towards you. Um, another reason is tanks can take a hit and keep going. And as we're seeing though, we're seeing that more weapon systems are coming out now to be able to stop these vehicles continue moving, but for the most part, most modern ba main battle tanks today are able to take a good hit and keep rolling. Will they be combat effective? Who knows? However, the crew inside, for the most part, should be, if not safe, not as injured as they could be as if you know they're taking a full direct hit. And again, that's very, very important. Infantry is always, always going to say, if you wanted no tanks or tanks beside you, what would you choose? It's a no-brainer. They're going to want to have that tank support. And that's another thing that brings me around to the point of tanks staying on the battlefield. The infantry and the tankers work together like a brotherhood. I've been in this situation. I've seen firsthand how infantry love the support of having tanks behind them. Once again, it works along the human factors mindset. Having a tank beside you on patrol or in some sort of uh, conflict environment, you know that they're beside you. You know you can use them A for cover, B for fire support, C for radio comms, supply, everything, transport. It's just one of those things that as an infantry soldier, you're going to want to have. Now, infantry have their own prerogative and they have the ho their own mentality. That's completely given. They do their thing, and if they don't need the tanks, they're going to come loose and do their own thing. But it's always going to be nice to have them on that side, just in case they need them. That armoured fist to be able to punch through the enemy if required. And another reason why I think the tank is here to stay for the formidable future, because infantry will always want to try and have that support with them. I can almost guarantee if you ask an infantry soldier, would you like to have tanks going into the battlefield with you, they're probably going to say yes. And if they don't, they're a brave soldier and shake their hand, because I can guarantee most people that you'll talk to will want to have that tank on their side. Um, another reason that tanks are very helpful on the battlefield is they provide a large coverage of land. Okay, so we have a platoon of tanks, we have a very large battlefield to scan across, however we have some really nice formidable defensive positions to be able to overlook the terrain. For instance, when this gentleman's carrying the shell, we see some uh, hillside in the background here. These are perfect firing locations to be able to post up a tank in a couple of hold down positions and observe large, large swaths of land, which is great because it gives us a bigger battle picture, gives us better domination of the, uh, of the battlefield. And again, providing less work for the infantry or potentially even air power in, in the area and the vicinity around. Close air support can only do so much. They're only on station for so long. They only can refuel for certain periods. They can only rearm for certain periods. And pilots can only fly for so long. When a tank's on the ground, it's there to stay. And the only way to get it in and out of an area is either to drive it there or to drag it out of there. And tankers will be able to hold station for as long as necessary. Uh, depending on a three-man crew or a four-man crew, they're going to be able to do the job for as long as necessary. Now, that's not saying air support and air superiority isn't going to be able to do the job too. There may be multiple air assets around. But it is one of those vehicles that can just stay on station. It doesn't need to worry about refueling so much. It doesn't need to worry about rearming as such. Most of the time, there will be support elements and uh, CSS to provide them help. So yeah, it's able to cover large amounts of land, and that's really, really important for battlefield commanders, because they wanted to be able to dominate the battlefield and secure large amounts of land if possible. One thing I will say, though, is with modern main battle tanks today, they are getting to the point where, what's our limits? What's our limitations? And as I said, one of them was weight. Another limitation is, what are we going to do once we start realizing these tanks?
tanks can potentially be controlled just from inside a box, just like the drones are from Las Vegas. Is there that potential? Well, that brings me on to a whole new topic, and one which in the future I will be discussing and making a video on. But it is something we need to think about and consider. Are we going to eventually start turning tanks into these automated systems that basically maybe even just have one crew member inside, being able to control the gun or a couple of crew systems, whatever it may be. Everything else is done by computer or by other crew members somewhere else. It's something that uh, is a little concerning, a little worrying. I've heard a few people talking about DARPA, the uh, Defense Research Project uh, people in the United States, developing such systems and trying to, you know, experiment with, is this the kind of thing that we can do? Can we produce vehicles on the battleground that we don't have to worry about lives being lost? We already see with the T-14 Armata that they're starting to look into crew protection over anything. I have my recent videos on the T-14 and the Macava vehicle relied on this heavily. You know, the, the fact that the capsule protects them in the T-14 and the various different subsystems that protect the crew inside of the Macava, which is, you know, I think going to be the way forward. It seems as also, though, that maybe that the Americans may be starting to think about that way, too. Um, we're starting to see all sorts of different things coming out for uh, the M183 and all the other sort of modifications from the SEP class, uh, which is really cool to see. But there is going to be always limitations when you stick to a common chassis. Now, I was reading actually a comment in my Discord channel. If you're not part of my Discord channel, guys, if you ever want to talk to me, please feel free to stop by and take a take a look and say hello. It is in the description below. Uh, but uh, someone was mentioned to me in my, my Discord channel. Uh, it was in, you know, just passing by a conversation. In regards to the Challenger 2, and uh, someone asked, well, what would you think would be the biggest improvement for the Challenger 2? And they're saying, well, you know, the bigger gun and an autoloader. Now, again, I've had my own opinion on the autoloader. Everybody hates my autoloader videos. A lot of people pissed off at it. Totally get it, you know, and they all get some serious burns. Um, but honestly, as of recently, I've been kind of persuaded a little bit towards the autoloader side. Um, and I'm thinking that potentially... You know, that's going to be the future for tanks. Now, in regards to the Challenger 2, it's it's just not an option. To have an autoloader system placed in the Challenger 2 is going to be so economically unfeasible that it's just not going to happen. Okay, For us to have an autoloader in a main battle tank in the United Kingdom, we are going to have to redesign the tank. Um, but it, this is another reason, again, why the main battle tank is going to stay for the foreseeable future. Think about the money, the research and development that has gone into designing these autoloaders and these systems to be put in place in modern day tanks. If we didn't think tanks were needed much longer in the future, we're not going to start procuring and designing these sort of systems in place because they're going to be redundant. We would just develop billions of dollars into the most high-tech anti-tank uh, guided weapon systems around. That's not just the case though, is it? We know that we're still trying to rely heavily on the main battle tank. Nations are still working hard to upgrade their vehicles with whatever packages they can afford or develop. And uh, yeah, just reinforces the fact that tanks are here to stay. Is that going to be for the foreseeable future forever? No. And honestly, my own opinion is I can't see the tank rolling around on tracks for the next 50 to 100 years. Because technology is advancing so damn quickly that I honestly think that we have a lot more... Mm, let me think here technologically advanced systems that are going to get put in place to replace the main battle tank. Do I want it replaced? Absolutely not. I want to see tanks rolling for the next 2,000 years. But let's just be practical here, guys. Let's just think reality terms. The tank will probably have something that will supersede it, whether it be... Uh, I mean, I've mentioned it a few times in the past in, in terms of sort of uh, skepticism and sort of fantasizing, but... Mech warriors, you know, vehicles that can jump, run, sprint at twice, three times the speed of a tank. Guns can't even track it. Rail guns, blah, 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 blah. All these kinds of technologies are being developed and researched. We're looking at robotics heavily now. There's a lot of defense networks looking into researching into robotics and defensive measures for, you know, different types of systems we can use robots for. Are we going to look into making, you know, main battle robots? I don't know. Are they going to take over tanks? I don't know. But I can almost guarantee that something in the future, whether it be 50 years to 100 years, will eventually supersede the main battle tank rolling around on its tracks, uh, treads. It's just, it's just my opinion. So, on that note, the, the basically, overall, the question has been answered. 
the tank is here to stay for the foreseeable future and honestly I'm really happy it is I hope it does I know there's a lot of people out there that will agree with me I know also there's gonna be a lot of people out there that disagree with me I'd like to know your opinion on it guys please 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 leave me a comment in the comment section below uh, if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and if you didn't then obviously let me know why and uh, if there's any information in this video that you find not to be correct then uh, again let me know and I'll try and annotate or correct it but once again guys this is purely an opinion based video and uh, I just hope you enjoyed it and you hope you can kind of uh, see as to where I'm coming from the main battle tank and maybe sort of uh, give your own sort of spin on the whole is the tank redundant and out, uh, out of the battlefield picture or not. So yeah, let me know what you think and uh, I hope you have a great day. Thank you so, so much for watching today. All the best and bye-bye.